Hi, Jeff Nelson of VegSource here. Have you ever wondered what causes type 1 diabetes in children? Or what causes rheumatoid arthritis, or lupus, or colitis, or any autoimmune disease? What happens in each case is that the person's immune system is activated against their body's own tissues, and your body attacks itself. But why would it do that? The simple answer is because of what you're eating. Here's how it works. If you have what's known as a leaky gut and food proteins leak into your bloodstream, your body will attack those food proteins because they shouldn't be in your bloodstream. If the food leaking into your bloodstream is dairy or other animal proteins, your body may attack not just the dairy, but anything that looks like dairy, which are parts of your own body. To understand how autoimmune diseases work, watch this fascinating excerpt from a recent talk by Dr. John McDougall. And between the blood vessel and the gut wall, you know, the gut where the food is and the partially digested food is, uh, in this, uh, between this blood vessel and the gut where the food is, there's one cell layer thickness right here. See this one layer of cells? It covers all these villi and goes through the entire intestinal tract, all the way from, the, from your mouth, right, right inside your lips, all the way to the other end. This one layer of cells. Now this one layer of cells, it does a marvelous thing. It's amazing. It's probably the smartest part of the body. Uh, when we have proteins from bacteria and viruses in our gut, this, these cells recognize them as being harmful and keep them from going into the body. But when we eat proteins in foods, hopefully plant foods, what these cells do is they recognize these as necessary nutrients and allow these proteins and amino acids into the body. These cells are so smart that if you eat a, quote, calcium deficient diet, which there's no such thing, but if you eat a diet like I eat, in other words, you don't drink any milk or take calcium pills, you eat a diet of, of starches, vegetables, and fruits, those, those cells are so smart that they will reach out and take in the calcium from those plant foods and bring it in and always meet our needs. And if we do something foolish, like drink glassfuls of milk or take in handfuls of calcium pills, and those cells didn't block that calcium and keep it in the gut and out of the body, we get very sick and die. We get soft tissue calcification. If those cells allowed all that calcium that the typical American eats to go into the body, people would be dying, the heart would get calcified, the kidneys would get calcified, etc. Those cells are so smart, every medical student learns that when somebody gets iron deficient anemia, say they bleed, that those cells become very active and increase the absorption of iron tremendously. I'll increase it up to around 20% of the iron that's in the, in the food gets absorbed because those cells get so efficient because those cells recognize the body needs more iron. But if we don't have iron deficiency anemia, we start taking in a lot of iron, those cells keep that iron out so that we don't develop hemochromatosis, a condition where the liver and the spleen uh, gets filled with iron and you die. Those cells are so smart, but those cells get injured and they die. They get injured by uh, viruses and uh, environmental toxins and just the typical American diet will kill off a lot of those cells. One of the more common things that kills those cells is uh, taking non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Motrin or Advil. You know how when you take those non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, the gut, you get gastrointestinal pain, indigestion, bleeding, it's because it destroys those cells. In fact, if you take non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs for a while, that border can be damaged so severely that it can take up to four months for it to grow back. Okay, so once that, once that, uh, that cell layer, that very smart single, just one single layer of cells, gets damaged, uh, those cells disappear, and uh, now you have what we call a leaky gut. So things can indiscriminately go through into the, blood, into the bloodstream, into the body. It doesn't have that, uh, uh, th those cells that would otherwise protect us. Okay, so <clears throat> there are lots of things that are supposed to stay in the gut and not go into the body, like viruses. But say viruses get into the body. Okay, here we have a virus in the body. It's in the bloodstream. And what the body does when it sees a virus is it uh, goes out to kill the virus. And one of the first things it does is the lymphocytes make antibodies. Uh, make antibodies to this, which we call an antigen. It's a protein. So the body makes antibodies that attach to this virus protein and kill it. 
or have other cells come in after it's attached, the antibodies have attached, other cells come in and they kill this virus so that we don't die from the virus. That's the way it's supposed to work. You know, it'd be good if the virus stayed out of the body, uh, stayed in the gut, didn't go in, but sometimes they break through and go in and people get virus infections. <clears throat> this is a protein that the body would recognize as foreign. It's beef protein. When beef is consumed, those cells that I showed you that line the intestine, they should keep beef out of the bloodstream. But if they're injured and you have a leaky gut, what happens is those beef proteins can get into the bloodstream and the body thinks those beef proteins are a virus, a virus coat or a cell wall of a bacteria. And so it starts making antibodies to those beef proteins to kill those beef proteins that leak through that gut because there was a leaky gut present. So it starts making antibodies, and it does it also when we have dairy, for example. Uh, if we have dairy, what happens is the dairy proteins, the beta casein, segments of the beta casein and other proteins, with a leaky gut, they get into the bloodstream, and the body thinks that these proteins are foreign. They are. They're from a cow. And it makes antibodies against these foreign proteins. But what happens is the antibodies made aren't just to that beef protein or just to that milk protein. What those antibodies find in the body, because you know these are foreign proteins, these aren't supposed to be in the body. Viruses, yeah, the body knows about viruses being in the body, but it doesn't know about cow milk protein or pig protein or other animal proteins being in the bloodstream. So it recognizes it as foreign, but it also recognizes it as the same. It will make antibodies to a segment of the cow milk protein Okay, it's, it's like a lock and key. It makes, it makes, it, this is a lock and key set up here. It makes antibodies to it. But what it does is it finds similar looking proteins to what's on a cow milk protein or a beef protein or a pork protein. It finds similar proteins on our own body tissues. Similar segments of amino acids, for example. We've identified in, uh, in type 1 diabetes, we've identified the 17 amino acids that the body makes antibodies to when cow milk protein goes into the bloodstream through this leaky gut. And we've also identified that same seven, sequence of 17 amino acids present on the insulin producing cells of the pancreas, the beta cells. So here's the scenario. The child consumes the milk. For one reason or another, the gut barrier doesn't work. The child has a leaky gut. The cow milk goes into the bloodstream. The body recognizes that cow milk as being foreign. It makes antibodies to a segment of that cow milk. We know what that segment is. It's 17 amino acids that have been identified. The body keeps making antibodies to that cow milk, but when it's searching around looking for those antibodies, it finds a similar segment of 17 amino acids on the surface of the beta cells of the pancreas, those cells that make insulin that attaches to them, and they die. That's how you get type 1 diabetes or other autoimmune diseases. This full, fascinating, and important talk from Dr. McDougall and many others are available on the Get Healthy Now Red DVD set. Click on the link below this video to go to our store and watch several other fascinating excerpts from the Red DVD right now. In these DVDs, you will learn the latest information about the cause of many chronic diseases, and more importantly, the solution to regain and protect your health. Thanks for watching.